Good morning. <clears throat> Look around you and see the beauty and the goodness of God. Look around you and be thankful that we are gathered here in the house of God. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was, who is, and who is to come. We welcome you to this Christ the King Sunday. Blessings and honor, glory and victory and might be unto the Lamb of God. We give a warm welcome this morning to any visitors. If this is your first time with us, we welcome you and we have a welcome cup to give you. If you'll please lift your hand, an usher will bring one to you. Uh, also, please fill out our visitor cards in the pew racks and place them in the offering plate. I am Pastor Penny Corey, and this is Kilmarnock United Methodist Church. We are so glad that you have chosen to worship with us. We pray that you will feel the presence of Jesus with us in this service. We are getting so excited about our Christmas concert by the Reverend Dr. Huntley Brown, a world-renowned Christian concert pianist. He was here last year, and he is coming again, and uh, he will be coming on Saturday, December the 9th at 4 p.m. for the concert. Mark your calendars now. You will be glad that you did, um, and we hope that you will help us advertise this with your neighbors, your friends, your family. It is a free concert, but a love offering will be taken to bless Huntley for sharing his God-given gifts with us. Um, and Huntley will close the concert with the singing of the Hallelujah Chorus. What a better way to celebrate the Christmas season. So help us spread the news about that. Right after church today, we will be having a children's ministry committee meeting in the Seekers classroom. We ask for anyone feeling the tug from God and seeing our children's program grow and wishes to help out, please come and attend. Also, KUMC is collecting items for the ELF workshop and now until December the 2nd. These are items that can be dropped off in the teen room or the church office. This is a time when our children get to shop for their family members and wrap the presents. So we are also in need of women's, men's, children's, and holiday gifts. So if you have extra uh, bags or tissue paper or gift tags or wrapping paper, we would gladly accept those as well. And if anyone would like to help our children shop for their families, please join us at 9.30 uh, on Sunday, December the 3rd. We are so thankful for all who supported our Thanksgiving mission dinner. We uh, raised $1,256 for the Agape Children's Center on the Eastern Shore. So praise God from whom all blessings flow. The chancel flowers today on the altar are given to the glory of God by Judy and Julian Altier in memory of their son, John Michael, on his 54th birthday. This morning we would like to dedicate our Samaritan's Purse Operation Christmas Child Boxes. Our congregation um, made and delivered 18 boxes. Since 1993, the Samaritan's Purse has delivered over 2 million Chris Christmas boxes to children who are affected by war, poverty, disease, famine, and disasters in more than 100 countries. When these boxes are given out, the message of Jesus' love and salvation are also shared with each child. So as the children open the boxes, you can see the joy of the Lord on each face. <clears throat> I would ask you now, if you packed one of these boxes, if you would please stand. 
as we pray for and ask God's blessings on each boy and girl who will receive them. Let us pray. Lord, we give thanks for your gift of love through Jesus Christ, your Son. Bless these huge boxes as they go out to children around the world. We pray that many of the children will receive Jesus as their Savior. Bless those who have shared their own resources to purchase items and fill their boxes with love and joy. We dedicate these shoe boxes that you may use them to touch the hearts and lives of many children. Bless the Samaritan Purse Ministry and those who will deliver these boxes of joy to the children. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you very much. We ask that all of you will register your attendance. There are pads on the pews, the aisle pew, pass them down, and then back to the center uh, for us. Let us stand for our call to worship. Enter God's gate with gladness and his courts with praise. For we are God's people and the sheep of his past. Serve God by showing justice and mercy. Enter his gates with praise. Let us pray together. Glorious God, enlighten our eyes to behold the hope to which we are called and to see the richness of our glorious inheritance in Christ. Reveal your ways to us. Bless this church with strength and with the light of Christ that it may rescue the perishing and reclaim the lost and scattered people. Amen. I invite you to turn in your hymnals to 327 as we sing, Crown Him with Many Crowns.
come to the time in our service now where we um, bring our thanks and our praise and our intercessions for others to God's throne of mercy and grace. If you have written a prayer on one of the prayer cards, if you'll hold those up and usher will pick those up for us. Um, we want to pray for David Reeves, who has been transferred to Farnham Community Senior Living, and uh, also pray for Laura as she deals with all the changes in their lives right now. We ask for prayers for Reverend Jack Bailey. Many of you remember him when he served the churches here on our district. Um, He lost his brother, Terry. Terry was only 66 and lost his battle with cancer. Um, Betty Riley um, has joined the eternal world with her husband, Dabney. And uh, we know that she was a strong woman and that she is now rejoicing with the angels in heaven. We do ask for prayers for the family and the friends and for our church who loved her so very much. We also have a prayer request from Sherry Bennett that she had two good friends uh, that she worked with for decades when she was in Northern Virginia who have died, Joyce Petrozelli and Pauline Rampersad. Also, uh, Chris Miller's brother, Steve, died this week, and we want to ask prayers for, for Chris's family. Prayers for Ralph uh, Kleinfelter. He is Betty Jo Kuhn's father. He is home from Walter Reed Hospital. He has congestive heart failure and is on oxygen. Let's pray for his health and healing. Jeannie Henley will have rotator cuff surgery on December the 5th. Dawn Smith will stay at RWC a little bit longer. And um, I would ask prayers for my sister, Martha Taylor, who lives in Newport News. They have found two tumors on her liver and one on her lung. We are waiting to hear more from the doctors. Let us pray. Almighty God, by your Holy Spirit, your whole church is governed and sanctified. Loving creator, almighty God, sustainer and giver of all good gifts, show us at KUMC tangible ways to faithfully fulfill our responsibilities as stewards of your church. Oh God, we ask for your blessings upon our church and its leadership. Show us our next faithful step as we work for the transformation of our community and world to Jesus Christ. Keep us as the apple of your eye. May Jesus Christ increase among us as we expand the kingdom of God in this place. May something extraordinary happen here at KUMC. We pray that we may all stand firm in the face of trials and tribulations. May our convictions not waver as we witness in Christ's name. We boldly proclaim that the blood of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary clearly defeats the devil. And in Jesus' mighty name, we have victory over evil. O Lord God, our healer, send your anointed healing power to those who are sick, those in the hospitals, those in rehab, in nursing care facilities, and those who are recovering at home. We especially lift up all those whose names we have read today. Oh God, hear the spoken and the unspoken request of our hearts. Oh great King of love, let the leaves of the tree of life bring healing to your people. We pray for our nation and our world. We pray for the wars and the fightings to end. We pray that there will be peace on earth. Let there be peace in Israel and the surrounding countries in the Middle East. Send forth your wisdom, justice, and mercy to our world leaders. 
make a way for peace where there seems to be no way. We thank you for the blessings of our military soldiers around the world who work to provide justice and liberty for all. We pray for all who are grieving the loss of loved ones, and we pray for the freedom of those who have been taken hostage in this war. We pray for all these prayers through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever, as we ask these things in the name of our risen Lord, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We invite you to stand and affirm your faith together by saying the Apostles' Creed on uh, number 881 in your hymnals. And then let us sing Gloria Patre on page 70. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Claims come into God's courts and give glory due to his holy name. Bring your offerings to God in the sanctuary. Praise the Lord in heaven and on earth. Let the ushers come. Let us pray. Lord, bless the gift and the giver and bless these offerings that they may be used to build up the kingdom of God in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
let's bow our heads for a prayer. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your <coughs> Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. The reading today is from Colossians 1, 9 through 20. For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives, so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might that you may have great endurance and patience, and giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of his Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins, the Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities. All things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead. So that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him and through him to reconcile himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The title of my sermon today is Be a Spoon. Let us pray. <clears throat> Holy God, quicken our minds, heighten our senses, tune our hearts that we might hear you speak to us as the Holy Scriptures are read and preached. Then, having heard, may we receive it, apply it, incarnate it, and obey it for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ the King Sunday is the last Sunday of the church year. It is the end of the liturgical church year. Next Sunday, December the 3rd, will be the first Sunday of Advent, <clears throat> the beginning of the church year. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Christ the King Sunday is the climax and the conclusion of the church year. For on Christ the King Sunday, the church is encouraged to refocus its energies on their true ruler, Jesus Christ. For no matter how troubling the events of the world may be, through Jesus Christ, we believe that a new dawn is peeking over the horizon. For Christ commands us to move with laser vision towards those who are in need around us, the widows, the orphans, the disabled people, the hungry, the sick and those in prison. Jesus would want us to love the unlovable and not to give up on those who seem to push us away at times. These people need the love of Jesus the most. This is where Jesus would have our vision to be as his church. I think it is great that on Christ the King Sunday, that we also dedicated our Samaritan Purse Christmas shoe boxes, for these boxes are filled with the love of Jesus. The children who receive these boxes 
have been prayed over. And perhaps you cared enough to fill one of these shoe boxes with gifts of love and prayer. Some child you will never meet may get to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior because of your love and your prayers. This Samaritan's Purse ministry is a life-changing ministry. The purpose of Christ the King Sunday is to celebrate the coming of the reign of Christ in his fullness. For even amidst the darkness of a sinful world, we look to Christ the King for our answers. We look to Christ the King for our hope in a dark world. Our Christian faith must constantly grow deeper and deeper each day, for we are challenged each day to mature in our faith and to bear more fruit. The emphasis on Christ the King Sunday is that we acknowledge Jesus Christ as our sovereign head, and we seek to grow more like him day by day. In Luke 2, 52, we learn that Jesus himself grew in wisdom and in grace. So too, we must grow, learn, study the scriptures, worship, pray, and serve him in the world so that we can become more excellent Christians. Paul says in Colossians 1 verse 9, we continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives so that you might live a life worthy of the Lord, so that you might please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work and growing in the knowledge of God. These things cause us to attend to the stirrings of God within ourselves. These things cause us each day to sing praises to Jesus and to crown him as our Lord and King of all. So I ask you, how are you using your time, your power, your privilege as Christians to help make sure that Jesus Christ is manifested in your life as your king. Do the people around us see the peace of Christ in us? Are we trying to bring the refreshment of Jesus Christ to those around us? You see, my friends, if we truly believe that Jesus is God's holy son, who died on the cross for the forgiveness of our personal sins, then we will devote our lives to serving him as our king. God is not done with us yet. There is still work to do for the kingdom of God. The first chapter of Colossians is an obvious choice as we talk about the lordship of Jesus Christ. For Jesus is Lord of all creation. He is preeminent above all creation. Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all of creation. For in Jesus, all things were created, things in heaven and things on earth. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. Jesus is the head of the church. He is the beginning and has supremacy over everything. These scriptures that we have read from Paul in Colossians paint the image of Christ. The Christ who suffered was died and crucified to bring the whole world to himself through his life, death, and resurrection. Paul wrote the book of Colossians to show every believer that they have everything they need 
in Christ. Paul wanted the church to know that Jesus who is the one who gives us our power for living. Because Jesus is supreme, our lives must be Christ-centered. That means Jesus Christ is our top priority and the only source for living the Christian life. We need to live like Jesus is our king, our leader, our head, our power, our source of living, and make sure that we stay connected to him. Paul says in Colossians 1, verses 13 and 14, so that you, through Jesus Christ, may be strengthened with all power according to his glorious might and have great endurance and patience, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of God of light. Wow! What a packed two verses. As we read and reread those verses, we stand in awe of these words, even as we acknowledge that by ourselves we cannot live up to them. For in this Christian life, we really need the strength of Jesus Christ. We need his power for the living of these days. We need his great endurance and patience so that all of us might joyfully give thanks to the Father that we share in the kingdom of light. For Jesus is our hope and our source of wisdom. Thank you, King Jesus. We look forward to your second coming and your reign as king on earth. This blessing and this hope that we share together comes from the entire life of Jesus Christ and his teachings that we have celebrated in the seasons of the church year during this past 12 months. For we sing with hope that in the days to come, we will get closer to the reign of Christ as king on earth We will have endurance. We will have joy. We cling to Jesus in these difficult and divisive times that we are living through today, and we feel the painful ugliness and the suffering of Jesus on that cross as we remember that Jesus died under the sign that said, King of the Jews. Yet, we also see the power of the light of the cross and know that the only way that we can get through our days here on earth is by clinging to Jesus. We feel the refreshing breeze of the Spirit and we feel Jesus' drops of grace that renew our lives. For the more we sing this song of hope written here in this first chapter of Colossians, the more we just might be able to try to live in the hope that is the reign of Christ the King. Jesus Christ reigns where broken people are. Jesus Christ reigns where the hurting, the hungry, and those who need forgiveness are. Jesus Christ reigns where people question their own value. Jesus reigns in you and me. And Jesus invites us today into his garden of suffering, for sometimes love causes suffering. This Christ the King Sunday is a call for us to pledge our allegiance to the reign of Jesus Christ Because Jesus is alive today, Jesus lives and reigns through you and through me. Christians are like silverware. Some are knives, 
who cut others down to size. Some are forks, grabbing and stabbing. Jesus calls us to be spoons because spoons have only one purpose. They are designed to serve. So here is the story. While setting the table for dinner one evening, a little girl entertained herself by bringing her utensils to life. Her mother listens at the knives, the forks, and the spoons carried on a conversation and wrestled their way to the table. Suddenly, the girl looked over at the mother and declared, If I had a choice, I would choose to be a spoon. A spoon, the mother replied. Why would you want to be a spoon? What's wrong with being a knife or a fork? Well, the girl explained, forks are too grabby, always stabbing stuff and taking it like it's theirs. Like in school, I hate it when somebody takes my piece of dessert with their fork and eats it. Okay, her mother agreed. What about a knife? No, she said. Knives are scary. Like they cut things and you can't really eat with them. They just slice stuff up, she responded. But the little girl continued, holding a shiny spoon in front of her face. Spoons can scoop up a lot of stuff, and even pass them around to others. They're just nice and round and smooth and friendly. Her eyes lit up. Yes, she said, I'd rather be a spoon. My friends, this is a great image of the Christian lifestyle. That little girl's analysis of silverware was right where it needed to be. Want to be a spoon? Spoons are distinctly different from forks and knives because instead of taking and cutting up, spoons are designed to serve. Want to be a spoon? A spoon offers sustenance to others. Spoons are adaptable and help with a variety of things, whether it is hot soup or even delicious ice cream. They scoop up things and then serve them to others. Want to be a spoon? They are good at stirring things together, like sugar in tea or vegetables in soup. Want to be a spoon? Spoons stir things and make them better. Before Saul's Damascus Road experience, he was a knife person trying to cut off Christianity. Then Saul met Jesus Christ personally and became Paul. He relinquished his confidence in himself and became committed to serving Christ to others. Paul transformed himself into a spoon. As a spoon, Paul demonstrated that he could receive support and sustenance from the Christian communities that he help to establish. He could also take the abuse and the insults that were dished out to him. In fact, Paul welcomed these experiences as a way to participate in Christ's suffering. Not even the prospect of death phased Paul, for he was fully convinced from the eyes of faith that the gift of righteousness that he had received would bring him to fully participate in Christ's suffering and also in his resurrection. So on this Christ the King Sunday, what kind of changes would you have to make in your lifestyle to stop all the frantic fork stabbing and the nasty knife slicing And what would it take to replace all those actions with scooping out a spoon-like service? Want to be a spoon? Dish up a heaping, helping spoonful of love to another person. Want to be a spoon? 
outdo one another in showing honor. Want to be a spoon? Welcome one another, instruct one another, wait on one another, encourage one another, be at peace with one another, bear one another's burdens, be kind to one another, forgive one another, confess your sins to one another, pray for one another. For when Christians spoon up all of these one another's, There will be no need for knives or forks. My friends, be a spoon. Let us pray. Thank you, King Jesus, for your great loving kindness shown to us. Thank you for your patience with us when we fail to live our lives according to your wisdom that you have shown us in your word. Thank you that through your servant Paul today we have received the message of the kingship of Jesus and also Jesus suffering on our behalf that we might know his salvation. Help us all to be a spoon and scoop out your love to all we meet. Help us to share the message of Jesus' salvation to one another. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We invite you to turn to 580 in your hymnals as we sing, Lead On, O King Eternal. benediction. May the peace of Christ the King be with us all. May the love of God and the grace of our King Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore, making us complete in every good thing that we may do the will of God. And the people of God said, Amen.